2005 was an appalling and atrocious year in the Atlantic Ocean. That year, we had 28 named storms, some of which were Greek alphabet names, and of which four were Category 5 hurricanes, the titans that caused catastrophic damage wherever they go. That year, we experienced Hurricane Katrina, the costliest hurricane in America history and would bring a swift and stunning downflow to New Orleans. That year, we also had Hurricane Rita, which caused the worst traffic jam in U.S. history and brought destruction to the Lake Charles area, also in Louisiana. But the mother of all Atlantic hurricanes was now approaching. This hurricane would be the most intense hurricane in the Atlantic Ocean in history, packing winds of 185 miles per hour and an insane low pressure of 882 millibars a record that is still the lowest barometric pressure ever recorded in the Atlantic Basin. This hurricane would bring Cancun to its knees as it stalled in the area, bringing 36 hours of eyewall to the tourist attraction. This hurricane would cause much damage to an already battered Florida coast and even absorb another tropical storm. This hurricane is Hurricane Wilma, the mother of all hurricanes. You might have heard of it. I am Pat from Pat's Path Predictor and welcome to the Hurricane Wilma documentary. In this video, we will be describing what I would like to call the magnum opus of the Atlantic. In this video, we will be going over everything from the science behind it to the storm and its packed insane winds. Wilma would begin as a monsoon-like system in the Central Caribbean Sea off the coast of Jamaica. A broad area of low pressure developed on October 13th, and two days later, the National Hurricane Center designated it Tropical Depression 14 near Jamaica. However, unlike a lot of depressions, the pressure was extremely low, at 1,000 millibars even, compared to an average of 1,008 millibars as it effectively stalled in the Caribbean, in perfect conditions for development. This tropical depression would soon start to strengthen, slowly at first, as it became Tropical Storm Wilma on October 17th, and it eventually reached 50 mile per hour winds before stopping to consolidate. The pressure at this time was 989 millibars, which is extremely low for a tropical storm and equivalent for a Category 1 hurricane. However, as this pressure was going down, the winds will always pick up with it and over the next day, it did just that. Wilma would become a hurricane on October 18th at 11 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, or 1500 UTC, but the pressure was down to 977 millibars. As Wilma was drifting over virtually untapped waters and extremely weak wind shear, Wilma would begin to intensify at a rate never seen before or since. As hurricane hunters were approaching Wilma, it was estimated that its winds were at 80 miles per hour. However, this was not the case at all. And when the hurricane hunters investigated the storm, they found winds of over 100 miles per hour, making it a Category 2 hurricane at 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Wilma did not stop at all. In fact, the rate of intensification accelerated greatly. In just two hours, the pressure dropped from 945 millibars to 901 millibars, dropping an unbelievably colossal 22 millibars an hour. To understand how great of a drop this is, we must look back at other rapidly intensifying hurricanes for comparison. When Hurricane Katrina rapidly intensified the second time, the pressure plummeted at a rate of 9 millibars an hour. Hurricane Rita's dropped at a rate of over 5 millibars an hour. And just recently, Hurricane Ida in 2021 saw its pressure drop by a monstrous 7 millibars an hour. Wilma intensified at a rate faster than these three beasts combined and anyone in its path was going to get obliterated by something I can't even call a monster because that is too small of a word. Wilma was a colossus, a titan that was bringing hell and apocalypse 
to whatever stood in its path. It is now the point where Wilma would reach its peak intensity with winds of 185 miles per hour, something not seen since Hurricane Gilbert all the way back in 1988. It was now the most intense hurricane in the Atlantic Basin and had the second lowest pressure in the world, only after Typhoon Tip in 1979. Wilma's eye was also unbelievably small, sitting at just 2.3 miles across, an eye so small that it could only be seen on microwave radar. However, this colossal strength and power would not last. An eyeball replacement cycle that had began as Wilma was intensifying, the outer band just didn't develop in time to overtake the inner eyewall, until it reached peak strength, and the hurricane began to expand greatly in size. But this cycle did not go well for Wilma's intensity, as it weakened back to a Category 4 hurricane on October 19th at 11pm. But by this point, Wilma was now moving west towards the Yucatan Peninsula and a town in particular, a tourist attraction called Cancun. Hurricane warnings were issued in Mexico as Wilma approached as a much larger hurricane. The hurricane force winds that only extended out 15 miles from the center at peak strength now extended out 70 miles, a nearly five-fold increase. A tropical storm force wind field now extended out 230 miles from the center, meaning that areas that were far away from the center of the hurricane were now in the danger zone. Wilma moved slowly to the northwest now, bringing tropical storm and hurricane force winds to much of Central America, including Cancun. On October 21st, Wilma made landfall on the island of Cozumel in Mexico with winds of 150 miles per hour, bringing devastation to much of the area and then some. Wilma had effectively stalled again, moving at a snail's pace, with some areas being impacted with hurricane conditions for up to 50 hours. That's an insanely long time considering the average is around 12 to 24 hours. Wilma would make a second landfall six hours later at the Mexican mainland near Puerto Morles. Wilma weakened due to land interaction, but after the stalling storm turned northeast, it began to strengthen again. Wilma was now moving much faster than before due to a powerful jet stream trough, putting Florida right in its path. Wilma strengthened into a Category 3 hurricane on October 24th, and on that same day, made landfall near Cape Romano in Florida. By this point, Wilma was moving at 23 miles per hour, three times the speed it was moving in the Caribbean. The eye was over 45 miles wide by this point, and the hurricane force winds extended out nearly 90 miles from the center, with the eye wall one of the largest ever observed. Wilma moved over Florida in just four hours before crossing into the Atlantic Ocean. Wilma had weakened to a Category 2 strength storm before restrengthening to Category 3 strength as it was absorbing a tropical storm. Tropical Storm Alpha, the first ever Greek alphabet named storm. However, the cooler waters began to take a toll on the storm that was once a colossus, and it began to gradually weaken, now moving at 53 miles per hour over the Atlantic. Finally, on October 25th, after passing Bermuda, Wilma became extratropical, and the NHC stopped issuing advisories on the storm. The next day, it was absorbed by another extratropical cyclone, and that was the last of Wilma. The damage was catastrophic for the Yucatan Peninsula. The tourism industry was wiped out for the rest of 2005 as a result of Wilma destroying lots of buildings and hotels. Cancun reported a wind gust of 132 miles per hour before the anemometer was knocked offline, the strongest ever recorded in Cancun. Storm surge of up to 26 feet, the highest since Katrina, reached the third floor of buildings and caused entire towns to be wiped off on the coast. 
Lots of crops were destroyed and 473 schools were damaged or destroyed. In total, eight people were killed in Mexico and over $450 million in damage occurred. And due to the tourism dropping up to 95%, $1.3 billion in losses from the potential revenue if Wilma hadn't hit resulted. In Florida, Wilma's storm surge was not nearly as devastating, only peaking at nine feet in the Florida Keys but still caused extensive damage across the state. In Fort Lauderdale, skyscrapers were heavily damaged by Wilma's winds and caused much flooding due to rainfall. Many homes and businesses were destroyed and over $1.3 billion in agriculture was lost. In total, 30 people were killed in Florida, five of which were directly resulted to the storm, and the damage totaled at $21 billion, marking the end of a year that caused catastrophic hurricane damage from Texas to Florida in the United States. Wilma wouldn't mark the end of the 2005 Atlantic hurricane season as we had Greek alphabet names that go all the way after that. But it did mark the end of the worst season the United States had ever seen. That was until 15 years later, where arguably a worse season happened but that is a documentary for another time. I am Pat from Pat's Path Predictor, and thank you for watching. If you would like to request a documentary, do so in the comments down below, and it'll be the ready for you. But with that being said, have a wonderful day. Stay safe.